Hello everyone. Today we're talking about the subject of wholeness. This is a very important subject for anyone seeking to live a meaningful life. And I want to give you an understanding of what God has to say about wholeness uh, through the scriptures and how we can move toward wholeness. So we'll talk just very briefly here about wholeness. What is it? Defining wholeness. I'll share how everything flows from wholeness. We'll talk about our universal longings that we all have for wholeness and then what provision God has made for wholeness for us and steps we can take toward wholeness. So let's begin over here. Let's define wholeness. The Apostle Paul prays in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, that every human would move toward wholeness, that we'd be sanctified, in other words, set apart to be whole in spirit and in soul and in body. And when Paul says that, he's explaining and revealing basically that there's three parts to us. We're one person but we're made of three parts. We have a spirit. The spirit is really that place within us, invisible, non-quantifiable materially or physically, but it's that place within us where God dwells, where we dwell with God. And out from that, it's God's intention that everything else flow. Our soul basically is our mind and our will and our emotions. It's, it's the manner through which our personality is revealed in the world. We feel, we think, we act because of our soul. Unique personalities. We're all human, but we all have different personalities. And then that soul finds ultimate expression, of course, in our bodies. Romans 12 talks about the body. Romans 8 talks about the body. Uh, in Genesis, in the creation narrative, when it says that God created humanity, he gave us not only a spirit and a soul, but a body. And of course, we all have bodies as well. Paul's desire that you would be whole and complete in every area, spirit and soul and body. We don't want to create a faith pursuit that is all about the spirit and ignoring the body and soul, or all about the body and ignoring the spirit. Wholeness must encompass all three, like three legs of a stool. Let me tell you why this is so important. The main reason this is important is because everything meaningful in your life will flow from spirit, soul, body, wholeness. When we pursue wholeness, we move away from certain things that are destructive and we move toward things that are meaningful. We're moving away from racism, toward inclusivity, away from greed, toward generosity, away from anxiety, toward peace, away from fear, toward courage, away from despair, toward hope, away from oppression, towards justice, away from abusing the earth toward caring for the earth. So pursuing wholeness doesn't make you selfish. Pursuing wholeness equips you to be a person who will bless the world. Our desire is that you move toward wholeness. And one of the reasons that we think that this is such an important piece of life in Christ and the life of faith is because every person, though they may not know it, actually longs for this exact wholeness. It says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11 in the Bible, that God has placed eternity in the hearts of humans. And what that means, among other things, is this. When there's a war and our hearts break for the pain and loss and suffering caused by a war, we're longing for peace. When there's cancer and our hearts break because we see a 30-year-old suffering under the effects of chemotherapy, ultimately uh, maybe not over, able to overcome that terminal condition, our hearts break because we long for healing. When we see sorrow, we long for joy. When we see anxiety, we, we, we long for, for calm and, and peace. Our deepest longings are for wholeness. An entire book, the book of Lamentations, was written by Jeremiah because he was mourning the loss of wholeness that, have, that had affected an entire culture, an entire nation, the nation of Israel. And so he writes and he cries out to God, God, we want peace, but war. We want health, but famine and a plague. We want hope, but despair. Wow. Everyone longs for wholeness. You see it in art. You see it in music. You see it in film. And you see it in the longings of your own heart. Lean into those longings. So we've talked about the definition of wholeness. We've talked about how important it is. Everything will flow from wholeness. Third, we've talked about how everyone in the world longs for wholeness. And then kind of the last question, just very quickly, is this, well, how do I pursue wholeness? What steps can I practically take to move toward wholeness? And I would suggest to you that God has made provision for wholeness 
in three specific ways. God has provided for wholeness in spirit because by virtue of Jesus dying, rising from the dead, and now able to live within us, our spirit, Romans 8, is made new. And we come to believe that God lives in us, and therefore we have the capacity for joy and hope and peace. We come to believe that through uh, certain spiritual practices. Reading my Bible is one of them. Meditating on Scripture and my identity in Christ is another one. Opening myself up to what God is trying to teach me through creation is another one. So we grow in our spirit toward wholeness. We grow in our soul by certain practices as well. We learn to move from bitterness to forgiveness. As we think about people who have hurt us in our lives and, and, and we're able to forgive them. And we move from, from uh, shame to acceptance of our own brokenness and our own failure and our own story. And we move from uh, uh, hate toward those who've hurt us to a capacity to love because we see that they too are broken people. There's a whole process. We call it uh, here redeeming your story. Every one of us has grown up with uh, certain bad things that have happened to us, certain lies that we've believed as a result of that, certain mechanisms that we've created to cope with pain, and many of those mechanisms have led to a loss of wholeness. Uh, we cope with pain through addiction. We cope with pain through blame. Soul work is learning to be freed from those things so that we can be the person that God had in mind when God created us. And then finally, of course, God's desire is that this new identity, Christ living in me, Christ loving me, me dwelling with Christ in a love relationship, me forgiving myself, me forgiving others, me learning to give and receive truth, me learning to live in hope and love, all of that will ultimately find expression in the body, but then it falls to me to actually steward the body that God has given me. This is about eating well. This is about sleeping well and resting well. This is about moving my body. Uh, we're not promised, obviously, a perfect body. We know that we'll age and grow old, but we are called to steward our body so that with the maximum capacity possible, we can display the hope and joy and mercy and meaning and generosity and hospitality that is Jesus finding unique expression through each one of you so that you can be in that story of hope that God is writing in the world. Everyone is looking for meaning. Everyone is looking for hope. Everyone is looking for purpose. You find it by moving toward wholeness, and that's what we're about. Both at spiritualbody.org and at the church I lead, Bethany Community Church, churchbcc.org, there are many resources to point you in the direction of wholeness. I hope you'll utilize those resources in the days ahead. Thank you very much.